it over yours well. I made a couple of um, mods to this thing. I've chucked some old, really old 60s, early 70s era electrical conjunct over this spring. It's really stiff, it's like really, really stiff hose, and that's taken on a spring out. So I still get to keep this little thing as an adjustment. Got plenty of adjustment on that, which is what I want. So yeah, I got that all. It's just this rod here though. This rod's too flimsy. I've got to gotta find a thicker one of these rods. Make that hole bigger. Do you have a bigger hole to fit a bigger rod through there? Get it make a big, another one of these. But with a bigger rod. Because this rod's got too, um, yeah, because it's so long, it's too... All the spring's coming from this rod now, so... Which is a bit of a pain in the ass. The tripod's supposed to be steady. Not have any sort of spring in it or flex in it whatsoever. But now that I've fixed one thing up, not a problem, is this. I've also put some of that same conduit around the base to protect the whatever floor I put this thing on. It's protecting the floor. That's the only drawback is this rod. Perfect for this, but too flimsy. Which is a bit of a bugger. I'll have to try and um, come up with another rod here. Yeah, a better rod for that. Um, I was going to try and reassemble this back in its original motor housing, but I've got no way, no way of holding the brushes in. If I do that, I can put this thing in the variac with a rectifier and spin it right up. That hasn't hasn't gone open circuit, so I can still use it for that. But um, yeah, I've got to put these brushes in, find a way to hold those brushes in somehow, get some old dodgy old springs, any old springs. Redneck duct tape it up and see what happens. So yeah, it's never going to be the same again. I'll try and see if I can find out the way to hold these rushes in. Because the springs are missing. That's actually supposed to go from there. Um, yeah. I'll try and get this thing back together see what happens. Okay, the oils are that's what the damn thing's supposed to look like. I'd have put something to hold those brushes in with a spring. Somehow I'll centre this plastic bit and just tape it up to insulate everything. This won't even hold centre because of the power of the magnets, so it might be a bit hard to get this thing to centre. Because the other clips have been smashed off. Something like that where those clips would have been. Hold this thing centre. Put some sort of springs in those brushes and just zip tie or something, some sort of band, non-conductive band around it to hold it together and centre it and it'll be fixed. Yeah, so I'll find a way to do that. Did I can over vault, see how fast I can get it to spin. But yeah, it might take some fiddling around there. Yeah, it's just a fan motor. It's a blower fan motor from a Toyota Hilux. It's been butchered and someone's just went crazy and just wrecked it. I've since got a replacement. Yeah, someone just butchered it and wrecked it. Hmm, it's going to be a, a tricky one to get centered, that's for sure. Okay, we all as well. This thing's just too far gone. I can't get the the um stator centered enough for it to turn fairly anyway, so a bit of a bummer. Would have been a fun one to burn out, but I managed to get this motor working again. The very tip of the brush just burnt off when I last ever vaulted it in the variac. I'll check what's up. I haven't opened this in here up yet, so all top it to find out how much damage we've done. Might do this on the ground and put my tripod on. Alright, viewers, I'm going to try and do one of these little overhead bench test fuse here. After work on the top inner adjustment. Not to get this camera exactly spot on, but let's get this thing undone. Pull open these little tabs on the side. Can I can only be bent a certain amount of times and they start to snap off. You can see the brushes there, if the camera can focus on that. Yeah, tips are burnt here. It's got to re get those tips to touch again and it should fire up again. Try and get a good view on the camera here, you got to get used to this. Yeah, you got to get the two tips to touch so on the so that they touch the commutator. So try and align that. Look in there carefully, which you won't be able to see in the camera, but I've got the commutator to reattach and close the circuit. 
that should be ready to burn out again. So they've got this stupid weight in here which makes it jump around too much. It tends to break its contact. Oh, that one's fixed. Try this one here. I'm going to try and see if I can get a better connection inside. This one hasn't got wide enough access to the clips. You can see there how they overlapped and burnt out. I'm looking at it this way. I can see that they're actually going to touch. You can see there I can get the brushes to touch again. I've got to bend it in a tiny bit more to get that to close the circuit properly. Should just bend that and they're pretty close together now and it should work. Now I've got a set of holes there so you can see now. Actually, hopefully this has still got charge. I should be able to test it with this, see what happens. Uh, battery's gone flat. Um, yeah. Let's give this thing an overvolt, see what happens. Okay, viewers, before I get this thing overvolted, I better test to see if my repair worked. That one works. That one was a successful repair. This one might not probably work while you screwed it up a bit. Whoa, that worked. Yeah, that's been nearly fell out of my hand, so that one has fixed too. So, shit, these things very act. Now, our viewers have got some stuff. An old, rusted out, leaky Commodore, VN Commodore wiper, wind windshield wiper washer pump. Had water through it and leaked and rusted out, so I got it going pretty good. I'm going to get bloated up, finish that off, if it doesn't rattle around too much, finish that one off. A half, well the filament on it is starting to break down, H3 55 watt fog light bulb, that have run on 50 volts. It didn't blow but it got quite hot and black in the glass inside from the filament so it's not quite blown yet. And an old AM, ferrite rod antenna. I tried to reuse it on another radio but no success so it's getting very act. I got this hard drive motor. I actually found out done an experiment before with a small transformer, these actually run off 50 Hz AC. Once you flip them and kickstart them, they'll run off 50 Hz of two other phases. So I've got it tapped into the AC side of the rectifier here. Just tapped it in straight off the AC side. I'm gonna check that nothing's shorting out because yeah. Running on a 50 hertz, this thing gets really, really hot. But it, yeah, it keeps running. Amazingly. Okay, I'm going to start turning it on. Hopefully nothing bad is going to happen. 20 volts. If I flip it, it should start. There we go, 20 volts. There we go, chip popped. That was about... I think it was 70, yeah, 70 volts input. So that's probably, a, I don't know, I didn't measure how much that was higher. I'd say it probably went to 80 volts to pop that. So let's just assume that popped at 80 volts. Huh, that didn't hold on very good. Yeah, pretty damn hot. Yeah, it doesn't numb. Pulse very good either. Normally they pulse when you spin them. This doesn't. This just spins nearly freely. It's gotten that hot. I see if I can punch this um center part out. Show you the windings. So yeah, we're doing all the tops in that before we move on. Okay, if you you see there where it's blackened. Well, that's where the windings popped. Spat a big black carbon mark there. <laughs> it looks like one of those Fisher and Parker smart drive motors. Basically, is what it is. Big fish on park and it's just a large one of these and they're driven to run at different um, rotations and all that sort of stuff. 
yeah, it's a, pretty much a BLDC motor. Make sure the power's off before we go any further. Cut that wire this as usual. All right, let's try and start with this H4 or H, uh, H3 bulb. It's a Phillips 55 watt, 12 volt, obviously. But yeah, the filament's half burnt out. I can tell it's going to blow. It won't last much longer, so it's going to get finished off. This tripod's coming in very useful, though. Alright, let's get that out of the way. I might hook this up just to see how much amps it pulls. It's pretty useful actually, it gives me an idea. Alright, I won't face upwards will it? There you go, that makes it better. Try and get it so you can see the amp here, as well as the light being blown next to it. That's better, you can see the amp. It's not disconnected, so let's give it a power. Power's on. Let's okay. We've got a bad connection somewhere, I might have to just fiddle around a bit. Okay, if you always will, I could just do this voltmeter as well as an amp meter, but probably can't see that because of the glare. Chuck something under it here so you can see it. I think that bulb was blown. I got voltage here, I tapped that, boom, popped. So I think I just blew it. And that was on 17 volts. Blowing it off of 11 volts here, or 9.03 volts off the rectifier. If I tap it, yeah, the bulb was already been popped. So let's move on to this little one. If that isn't already popped, hopefully it's not. Yeah, hook this on here up. So I didn't know that was popped. That would have been a good pop too, but yeah. Must have must be a very fine break in the filament. If I had a mot I would have put that on, on that. Would have been pretty interesting, but I already um, re around it. Okay, I don't know if that's already popped. I remember it didn't pop the last time I um, overvolted it, so hopefully it won't pop too soon. Um, that's not yep, good connection. Alright, let's give that a try. Okay. Hmm. That one must have popped already as well. Alright. Let's try this motor then. Oh, that's a good view. So zero. Okay, turn off. Got to rearrange. Uh, nothing touches and shorts here. Okay, that. Yeah, a little bit warm. All right, let's reset and go again. I might still be able to salvage that one. I might have just burnt the brush away. I might be able to fix it. This is probably going to bounce all over the bench, I bet you. Yeah. Connection came undone. Ah. Oh. Terminal snapped off. There goes that one. Pull this one apart. You can see the water seal's chopped out. Here's a before shot. See the water's gotten in and rusted it out. That's the before shot for you. It's all rusted out in there. Commentator's all tarnished. Brushes are okay. 
That's before prior. This is a prior. Uh, yeah, pre-burnout um, preview of the inside of this motor. Power's off. I was going to make sure of that. This might take a bit of a volting to get it to pop. Okay, let's give that a. Very close to touching and shorting yet, so I better go get a connector for that. Okay, of yours. It's much better. I've got an insulated connector on there. It's very set. I reckon I want to run that. The multimeter will tell me what it went up to. I did turn the power off, always make sure I do that. Oh, that stinks. Oh yeah, Whew. look at that, I if I can't burnt the brushes clean off, spat the commutator, cook the windings, no it didn't, that just sort of didn't, it? yeah the windings didn't even cook, there's one of the brushes, <laughs> luckily I kept this, I knew it would come good to blow up, these sorts of motors, I should have turned the variac up more slowly though. <laughs> there we go, spat the winding off that com bar. Spat the commutator right off. Alright, that one has burnt out. They're all dead. Now let's chuck something under this again to get this to not glare. Let's try this antenna. Fair right core antenna from the should be, should work. Okay, that didn't must have been the right combination of windings. Alright then. Let's try the root. Red and the blue connectors here. One of these two windings used to work. Just got to find which two and see if I get enough to pop it. Okay. Well, that didn't do anything. I was expecting it to just go black and poof. Okay, well that didn't work. There you go, that's my popping for today. Yeah, you can see why a lot of the bulb didn't work. The filament was only just touching. It's falling off completely now. Might um, try and get this motor going again. See if I can get another blow up out of it. Okay, we always fix this motor up, I think. I managed to get it to touch. You can hear it skipping and clicking about in there. Is burning at another shot. Then I gotta burn this out. It's a um, buzzer off a Dell Dimension 3100 motherboard. Hack this motor works? No. She's dead. Make sure the power's off when you get it. Yeah. Brush is not forming a complete closed circuit, so she's gone. Now let's try this buzzer speaker. It's a part of the computer that goes beep, beep, beep. What a time. Alright, let's put that, connect that one there. I've ripped this off the motherboard just because I was so like, rough and quick and wanted to get it off instead of just desoldering it, which takes too long. Break one of the pins off it. Hold on, I'm going to pop it. So let's give it a pop. I'm going to turn it very, very slowly. 
you hear the beep as well as the ripple from the rectifier interfering with it. If the polarities are right back there. That was a nice one. It didn't beep but it made a nice little smoke. There you go, still smoking. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> okay, viewers. Thanks for watching.